black magic, white magic, witchcraft, the occult. They all seem to have lost none of their fascination. And the city of Turin in northern Italy has been the site of some unexplained and mysterious phenomena. Turin in northern Italy has become a major center of the occult. White magic and black magic has become a major source of employment. 64 people died in this movie house during the showing of a film Satan's followers disapproved of. The cause of the blaze is still not known. The tragedy followed complaints that the devil had been ridiculed during carnival. There's so much black magic being practiced in Turin that cemeteries have to be guarded. The cold practitioners plunder graves to steal skeletons and bones needed for their rituals. But supply does not meet demand, so bones are imported from third world countries. Most black magic followers operate secretly, unlike white magic sorcerers. This mausoleum used to serve as Turin's high altar of black magic. Now the city has closed it because the building is falling apart. A self-professed sorcerer, Joseph, explains the kind of ceremony that used to take place. What he describes amounts to nothing less than a gruesome sexual orgy. The fire of black magic burns brightly in Turin. The state that Turin or Torino is an occult and esoteric city would be an understatement. As soon as I arrived in the city's main train station and emerged into the city streets, the psychic climate of the urban landscape literally screams sorcery and magic. It's a boiling inferno of the supernatural and esoteric arts. The stunning architecture and classic Masonic cityscape of mainly Baroque and Art Nouveau architecture only adds to the overall mystique behind the city's reputation for the occult. My interest in the esoteric reputation of Turin spawned initially out of my appreciation for the movies of Dario Argento who based his Mother of Sorrows trilogy on what is known as the Black Magic Triangle, in which Turin is one of the cities represented. Depending on which sources, the other cities within the Triangle are either Prague, Budapest, Lyon, San Francisco and London, and special mention is also attributed to Turin's mystical connection with the Swiss city of Basel. As with so much of the occult, digging through the mythos, one discovers that many ruses and diversions are created. Even so, there is no doubting that Turin is not only part of this magical urban environomicon, but very possibly the epicenter of it. Which is what eventually brought me here and will continue to do so for many years to come as this film will only scratch the surface of what I have yet to uncover in the years ahead. The meeting of waters has also long been central to occultic locations and Turin is where the Po and Dora Aria rivers flow through this city and may be the reason for the reputation for Turin being the meeting point between dark and white magic, as well as that of the demon world and the world of men. This reputation being represented by Turin being long regarded as the gateway to the underworld by the Romans and to hell by the Christians. The piazzas having been built above ancient Roman necropolises and heavily connected to the dismanibus debt cult of ancient pagan Rome. The actual location of this entrance to the underworld at the Piazza Stat Uzzo with its remarkable Fragius fountain, so intense are the energetic forces in this part of the city that Notre Dame himself chose to live here as he considered it to be the epicenter of magical forces within the city with its orientation 
towards the Alp Mountains looming nearby. As with other cities in the Magical Triangle, alchemy was also heavily practiced in Shurin, and in and around the Piazza Castello are said to be many alchemical laboratories under the basement of several buildings. The Holy Grail itself is also reputed to be hidden nearby, as with all such Grail legends this is almost certainly relating to esoteric knowledge rather than an actual object. Energetically, the most magically intense section of the city, and the main reason I went to Churum, the Piazza del Palazzo. This is considered the absolute demarcation line between the demon world and that of humans. The diabolical abyss on the doorstep of the sacred quadrant. It certainly feels that way when you go there, especially at 3 o'clock in the morning as I did. The Piazza del Palazzo is dominated by two magnificent statues of Castor and Pollux, the eternal twins of the heavens, although the motif of the inverted and upright pentagram of Lucifer can be seen on one of their foreheads and it appears all over the city. According to even conservative estimates, Turin has hundreds of coffins and magic circles which openly conduct ceremonies. Between 30 and 50,000 Satanists or Luciferians, as they really are, call Turin their home. Nothing is hidden in this respect. Occult bookstores are numerous and well stocked, and even regular newsstands sell occultic newsletters, magazines, and other esoteric literature. Groups such as the Church of Satan may no longer be as high profile as they once were in Turin, and these days black masses tend to be now held in private homes. Since the 1980s, the Catholic Church has ostensibly declared war on the occult landscape within Turin, although it has to be said with little effect. Every so often the media will have sensationalized stories of former satanic cult members lamenting the loss of their souls for the cameras and the public at large. Most people are also aware that Turin is the location of the alleged burial shroud of Jesus Christ, although this is most certainly a forgery. The shroud of Turin is perhaps the ultimate mysterious object on the planet. It may well be a complex image created by an alchemist using a camera obscura. However, it may also be something to do with death and resurrection in a magical sense. This is another of Turin's reputation in that over the centuries there have been reports of the dead being brought back to life by sorcerers. The reason why the shout of Turin is in that city to begin with is also highly significant. Likewise, the city has unsurprisingly developed a reputation as being haunted. This has naturally attracted British and American ghost hunting TV crews, who usually find themselves chasing demonic activity, believing they are the souls of the departed. This included a week-long special by the TV show Most Haunted in 2008, marked this as taking on the devil in his hometown. Turin is a Pandora's box of hidden occult and esoteric secrets. On one hand, the use of magic and sorcery by a huge section of the city's population is open and in front of everyone's eyes, but it is merely the veneer of something much deeper below the city. Its architecture, its citizens, its general atmosphere gives Turin a feeling that something deeper is below the surface, both geographically in terms of the actual urban landscape itself and more importantly within the psychic climate of this stunning 
and fascinating city.